Let's say you exposed a blatant security hole in AT&T's servers, one that would endanger customers' personal information, privacy, and was easily tinkered with by nearly anyone. You'd probably expect some acknowledgement, maybe a begrudged pat on the back, something like that. Well, Andrew Ornheimer did just that and got three and a half years in prison and a close to $73,000 fine. He found a hole that allowed anyone to go in and find emails from any AT&T iPad user. And he didn't necessarily hack in, he just navigated a completely messed up system. He didn't really breach the security on his own. So he used this method of going into famous people's emails and exposing it to the press, which is something security people do more often than you might think. In the prosecution chat logs, which they relied heavily on, they showed him talking to his friend about defaming AT&T a little bit, shaming them and building himself up as a security expert. U.S. Attorney Paul Fishman noted his atypical recalcitrance by the defendant to conform to the laws regarding unauthorized computer access. He said his entire adult life has been dedicated to taking advantage of others, using his computer expertise to violate others' privacy, to embarrass others, to build his reputation on the backs of those less skilled than he. So yes, he may have been a jerk and a troll and exposed things that people didn't want exposed, but is that alone enough to convict someone? I would say no. I don't like it when people are mean to me and expose my idiocy online, but that's not enough to convict. And if AT&T security holes are that bad, maybe they deserve a damaged reputation. Do you think that maybe why his sentence was so harsh, why the sentence is against anyone who violates the CFAA is so draconian is because he embarrassed them. This ridiculously overbloated sentence for someone who was a network intruder subject to the Computer Fraud and Advocacy Act reminds me of someone else, Aaron Swartz. He wanted to decentralize information, he wanted to spread open access and evangelize it, and in his case, prosecutors demonstrated a willful subjugation of logic in favor of policy. Carmen Ortiz called what he did the same as breaking in with a crowbar, which we all know is not true. When he left MIT with his hard drive, he hadn't taken anything of value away from anyone. And this is something that needs to stop, or at least be reformed. And I don't mean to say that we should give hackers free reign of private networks. There should be some differentiation between acts of malice and transgressive but well-meaning acts of curiosity shown by Swartz and to some extent Ornheimer. Right now we have a system that punishes those who could help us. Now Republicans like to say that we are under a hacking threat and it is true, we are, as the New York Times has shown, there is a threat posed by China, Russia, Eastern Bloc nations, Iran, and we're punishing those who could help us and who could help protect our valuable computer infrastructure. It was thought that Aaron Swartz's death would be some kind of turning point reached by means that you would never want to replicate, but so far that hasn't been the case.